Grace and peace in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ from Nazareth, Yahshua the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the chef of all chefs that cooks your meal as I serve it to you, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father, the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. <laughs> Y'all ready? We're going to start off with a prayer. As you know, we got to wash our hands when we come to the dinner table. I want you to say, Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me of all sins. Wash me in your holy blood. Thank you for the word that I'm about to receive. May I receive it and don't let the enemy take it from me. Lord, may I have the mind that was in Christ Jesus. May I be able to focus on the word and receive it by faith. Bind all the powers of darkness and bless the and bless this ministry, Lord, as they feed me faithfully. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Are y'all ready for this? I'm meditating the other night. <clears throat> and the Lord dropped the word honey. I'm <laughs> Amazing. So... You know, I do have announcements, but I kind of really don't want to take time for that. I'll give y'all a couple of announcements. Y'all be on the lookout for more videos. We have committed to this new year. Even though it's not the Julian calendar, we still want to honor it as a new year based upon what most of y'all celebrate. So with this new year, we are so committed. Committed to seek the Lord more. Committed to read and pray and fast more and fellowship more, committed to serve you more, committed to feed you more, to encourage you more, warn you more, pray for you more. And I know with the help of the Lord, Lord willing, we can do all things through Christ. Um, my question is, are you committed? Are you a partner? Are you supporting the ministry? Do you pray for us? Do you get on the Thursday night calls? You got to ask yourself this. It has to be reciprocal relationship here. You know what I'm saying? So we are committed. The question is, are you? And shout out to our committed partners. We love y'all so much. We got a lot of things we want to get done this year. We do, by the grace of God, want to open up a building here in Atlanta. Um, a building that people can come to become so equipped and strengthened and sent off to do battle against Satan in the spirit realm. So uh, hop on board. We need all the soldiers we can get, but sincere soldiers. God told the man, get rid of everyone. I just want 300. If that's what it takes, we got a war to fight, y'all. And we need true men and women of God that are ready to step in and do battle. With that being said, we love you. I got some other announcements, but I'll save it for another video. Because this one right here is, is just a life-changing message. And it's very fun. It's a fun message. And once again, as you know, the name of the ministry is the Revelations of Jesus Christ Ministries. Uh, Revelationsofjesuschrist.com and the ghettogospel.com is our street outreach. Both go to the same website. Our website will be under construction down the road uh, shortly as we are getting things, uh, you know, reformatted. So, with that being said, another revelation of Jesus Christ was given to me. And I'm so grateful to give it to you in Jesus' name. So, I hope you got your Bible. You better have your Bible. Get yourself a pen and a notepad. Better pause this video and go get it cracking. So, here it is. I'm there meditating. <laughs> the Lord just literally dropped that revelation of honey on me. Because, you know, it's something I've overlooked. And, you know, being in spiritual warfare, I've known of honey being used in black magic and sorcery and witchcraft a lot of times witches will use honey in their spells as a binding agent you know and so forth but no weapons formed against us shall prosper 
So should we focus more on what the enemy does or should we focus more on our Lord and Savior? It's okay to know what your enemy is up to. Paul said we are not ignorant of Satan's devices, right? I mean, even the Israelites sent spies to spy out the enemy's land. But you don't stay there. <laughs> if you do a little bit of research, back up and get back into your word. Get back into prayer. Don't wander off into the internet wilderness. That's good. That's good. Some of y'all needed to hear that. So, you know, whenever I would know about honey, I never really stopped and thought like, wait a minute. Honey is mentioned all through the Bible. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, what God has revealed to me has changed my life. And I do want to say, and of course, all our partners out there, y'all know. You know, you're sincere. You've been seeking the Lord. You're committed to Christ and to this ministry. And you know what we always say. Don't take these messages for granted. And for the rest of y'all who, for whatever strange reason, are not committing to helping this ministry, if a ministry is truly from God, it would only be evil to withhold your help when you're able to. And that's not just financial help. That's your prayers, uh, getting in the fight with us, doing spiritual warfare alongside of us, fellowshipping with us, telling people about the revelations of Jesus Christ ministries, letting people know we exist and where you get fed secretly from. Because a lot of y'all are like Nicodemuses. You secretly learn from the Lord in this ministry, but you openly support a lukewarm, watered-down physical ministry. That ain't right. So don't take these messages for granted. That's why some of the messages are only given to partners. Like the Altars of Light and Darkness was such a powerful message. It, I was terrified preaching it because it revealed, and y'all partners know, I know some of y'all are like, Brother Works, amen. Because that message, it's a two-part series, it literally changed the way my wife and I and all our beloved brothers and sisters, all our partners, y'all know who you are. It literally changed the way we pray. Our understanding of who Christ is as altars are concerned and, of course, the tabernacle. And that message, for only those that are sincere. That's the reason why God told me to do Partners Access where people that are sincere, those that will not trample these messages in the mud like a pig or a dog, will get these messages and appreciate them. Let me ask you a question. Let's say you open up a, a food pantry. All are welcome. And you have a five-star chef that man or woman went to culinary school for years. They have traveled the world studying all different types of seasonings and ways to cook. And they, they're kind enough to work in your food pantry to feed the public. You can't tell me that you would see some people that would appreciate the meals that you give them for free, a food pantry, a public pantry. And you see them cutting that filet mignon and they're just, oh, and they look up to you. Well, first they look up to God like, oh, thank you, Lord. And they look over to you because you know you sacrificed to run the food pantry. Say, hey, thank you so much. This food is amazing. Like, I'm not even worthy for such a meal, but I just want to say thank you and tell the chef that I am so thankful because I could tell they cooked this meal with a pure heart and with a love and they put it in as if they were going to eat it. In fact, they come and sit down and eat with us. 
that would bless you. It would encourage you. It would say, it would be like, you know what? That is amazing. People like that put wind in the sails of the food pantry. Not that you need the compliments or need the appreciation, but gratitude determines your latitude. Let me see. <laughs> gratitude determines your latitude. I had to say that again. Now, what about if somebody came to the table and that chef in the kitchen, who is Jesus Christ, by the way, that chef worked so hard to make such an amazing meal, a, a a, uh, what's that word? Exotic meal. And the people just like. I gotta go. Is this all you got? Like, ooh. Like, that's so disgusting. But y'all, I'm gonna keep it real with you. What type of person are you at this dinner table? What type of person are you? Are you really grateful for these messages? Or are you ungrateful? Or do you have a restaurant? Some of y'all pastors, do you have a restaurant and you come to spy out this kitchen and try to take the recipes and bring it to your church and act like you're getting the revelations when you're really not? That's satanic. That's demonic. That's lying. You won't tell your people about this ministry, but you secretly watch the videos. You don't want to support Christ. You don't want to support his ministry. You better make sure your heart is right. What good is it to study the word but not have the word in you? <laughs> to not know Christ. Don't take these messages. Don't take these messages for granted. I'm telling you. Show appreciation. And, and show your love by your, not just your words, the Bible says, but your deeds and your actions. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. But you got to realize... You need to hear that. And a lot of y'all appreciate. We are so grateful for the emails we get. You know, the the comments y'all leave. And, and as y'all know, we don't get to respond to a lot of them. And if some of y'all need prayer requests, email us and be specific. Tell us what your prayer requests are if you need anything within righteousness. But y'all listen. It's time to show thankfulness to what God does for you. These messages are not what you think they are. They are prophetic messages that go into you and they go into your spiritual stomach and your spiritual stomach breaks it down and passes it through your entire spirit, man, to prepare you for things to come. You are being strengthened now with the word. Faith comes by the hearing of the word and you are actually growing and becoming stronger by the messages that Christ gives me to give to you. So with that being said, I'm very excited about this message. The eternal honey. <laughs> Why would I call it that? Well, I was minding my own business, my own being there. And I found out that honey, if preserved correctly, has an eternal shelf life. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like a, a, a kid in the candy shop right now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so excited about this, this message. It's not that long of a message, but does it have a lot of seasoning? Hallelujah. Glory to the chef. I point over there because that's where our stove is at. You know, Christ is the chef. Can I get a name? Man. So... There was uh, not, you know, at some point in not in um, not too long ago, archaeologists found capsulated honey in an Egyptian tomb in Egypt, three over three thousand years old, and the honey was still edible. Bacteria cannot grow in honey. 
when it's preserved correctly. Leaven cannot grow in honey. I started to meditate and all of a sudden I started to download. You know, Paul said that it was in the desert he received revelation. It's like a, it's like a, it's, it's kind of like a, like a thumb drive, right? Even though this is a chip one, but let's say this is a thumb drive. It's like Jesus will take a heavenly thumb drive and he'll just stick it in the back of my neck, and he'll upload a message into me to give to you. That's how I feel. Like I literally download data from the Holy Ghost. I started to download and and it was just so, and I knew because the main thing I look for is father, show me your son in this message. Because at the end of the day, I want Christ to be revealed. I want revelations of Jesus Christ. And he's so faithful. He gave it. (laughs) Oh, Lord. He gave it. And, and I'm going to save it to the end. Don't be trying to fast forward either. Okay, you start with your bread and salad, your little soup, work your way to your steak and potatoes. So, let's talk about this. So, honey has an eternal shelf life. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean like at the return of Christ, honey won't burn up with the elements. That's not what I mean. But honey will preserve itself for thousands of years. It's insane. Now, again, like I said, why is honey so important to witches? Why do they talk about bees and things like this? A lot of things Satan tries to take and copy that originate with the Most High. So many examples. For example, the rainbow. It got taken by the enemy now. Where... Two sodomites will hold a rainbow flag. That's not yours. That belongs to the Most High. That rainbow was a promise. It was a, it, it was a covenant. It was a, I won't flood the earth again promise. And so on and so forth. But I'm going to take back the bees and the honey to the gospel. Because the witches and warlocks can fake and pretend and act like they they know about the bees and the honey and all of that and the symbolism of it, but it belongs to the Most High. Can I get an amen? Now, I'm not going to go into like a whole Sid the Science Kid and tell you everything about bees. I'm going to just give you a simple breakdown so you can catch the revelation, see the glory of Christ in the message, And get excited. Burp, wipe your face, and walk away. I'll see you in a couple days. Hallelujah. Anyways, good to have you back at the dinner table. And uh, here we go. So, I wrote down some scriptures about honey mentioned in the Bible. There's so many. So, obviously, I'm not going to read them all. But I want you to read them on your own time. Okay, but before we do that, and, and I will integrate a prayer to break any witchcraft operating through honey and spells and and all of that the uh the bees coven and all of that break their powers okay the sting of a spell from a bee huh we're gonna break that in jesus name but uh before that because really that's not even that important (laughs) god can break a spell like that but what's more important is revealing christ Amen. Breaking the spell is important, but not as important as the revelation you about to find out. Amen. So, like I said, honey was used for food and medicine for thousands of years. It's even like even by nature, even before a lot of y'all got saved, if your child got sick, the first thing you wanted to do was make tea with the honey. My wife ain't no joke with tea. And I know a lot of y'all are different nationalities, whether you're Dominican or African or, or you know what I'm saying, Jamaican or Spanish, uh, Puerto Rican. Tea is heavy. Tea is also heavy in England and London and certain places. 
I like green tea myself. I'm not really into like the black teas and all of that. I like green tea. It's more healthy. Japan, shout out to the J- Japanese brothers and sisters in the Lord. Um, but tea is healthy. It, it, and when you mix that, now don't get no bootleg Walmart honey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like spend the extra two dollars and get you some real organic honey. We get the creamed honey um, from Trader Joe's. Excellent honey, and you boil up. Uh, my wife puts turmeric, um, some other things, and you know she'll be excited to tell y'all if you want to know. Um, we we shred um, ginger from the root, let it boil with the water. Get yourself some tea. Be careful now, as y'all know, we told you Gaia products and Yogi tea. Now leave all that alone. Um, you can find some tea that's not attached to the new age, but still pray over this stuff and bless it in Jesus name and sanctify it with the word of God and prayer. Have tea at night. It'll help you sleep. It's good for your body. And of course you mix that honey in. But my point is, is you knew in instinctively, I need to give my child some tea with some honey to help the throat, help the cough. So, had a lot of, um, you know, medicinal uses for thousands of years. It was it has antibacterial. Now, was really meditating on this. And again, like I said, even non-believers who don't even believe in the Lord, scientists and people that study food as well, will tell you, honey, really, they call it eternally. They call it like um, infinite honey or whatever. They all give it different names because they know honey, if preserved correctly, will last thousands of years. So then that's when I got the revelation. So the eternal honey, I believe that's going to be the name of the title. It might change. We'll see. But I want you to go to Genesis with me. Chapter 43. Genesis 43. Hallelujah. You having fun? You having fun? Water, something you need a drink. Well, come on, let's have fun. We at the dinner table here. So Genesis 43. Okay, don't be walking up in my fridge like you know a brother. You know what I'm saying? Trying to take something out of my freezer. You know what I'm saying? You ever know someone like that? They just walk up in your crib and you ain't mean. Just start going through your cupboards trying to cook something. But you know, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. If they're really close to you, they feel their family. That's a good thing. Anyways, I'm just joking anyways. Okay, so Genesis 43. What does it say in verse 11? And there, and their father Israel said unto them, If it must be so now, do this. Take of the best fruits in the land in your vessels and carry down the, the man a present, a little balm, a little honey, spices, and myrrh, and nuts, and almonds. You see that so... He was giving a gift, an offering, a gift, and honey was included. Now, honey is mentioned throughout the whole Bible. So, there's so many scriptures where honey is mentioned. So, so what I want to do, we're going to go through some scriptures now. I want you to write some down and then some I'm going to read to you. Genesis 43, 11, write that down. Um, he gives a gift and honey is included as a gift. Okay, but what I want to talk about is a lot of times you hear about like God saying, I will give you a land flowing with what? Milk and honey. And if you notice milk, Paul compared the word to milk. They desire the sincere milk of the word, right? Honey is the more mature of the word. You see the parallel there. Milk is when you start off. Honey is when it sweetens up. And it becomes an antibacter- antibacterial in your life. <laughs> we won't get into it. Just be patient. Be patient. Write these down. Proverbs 24, 13. Proverbs 16, 24. Proverbs 25, 27. And Proverbs 5, 3. We will read Proverbs 24, 13. The rest you're going to read on your own. Amen. But please read them, though. Read them. You know what I'm saying? Don't just write them down. 
but actually go through your notes that you write down during these uh, messages. So Proverbs 24, 13, look at what it says. My son, eat thou honey because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. Wait a minute. So honey spiritually is symbolic to wisdom to the soul. That's so good. You know, the word says in Proverbs that pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. You ever read that before? So you can't overlook this. Why does God mention honey all through the scriptures? There has to be something that God the Father wanted us to know. And I'm just honored that he would give it to us to give it to you. It makes us feel special. That's why I love the ministry name that he gave us. Because for the longest time, I said, Lord, we need a foundational name. Because the ghetto gospel ministries was originally just the outreach for part of the ministry to reach out to the streets where the ghettos are to bring the gospel to the ghetto, the ghetto's gospel. Swig of water, hold on. So when he finally gave the foundational name, the revelations of Jesus Christ, I knew, I just felt it. I was like, yes, Lord, this is what I've been waiting for because that's what we desire in this ministry, the revelations of Jesus Christ. And we are living in the book of revelation of Jesus Christ right now. So it has a double meaning. Now, again, honey now is referred to as wisdom. I want you to write down these Psalms, Psalms 81, 16, Psalms 19, 7 through 11, Psalms 119, verse 103. Just a couple, like I said, you'll end up finding more on your own study. And make sure you also do your own study on top of this, because you might find something I didn't catch. You see what I'm saying? One hand wash the other, iron sharpens iron. Now, I'm here and I'm meditating, and I said, okay, so... Lord, show me what you want to tell me now because, okay, the land shall be flown with milk and honey. And you just seen what that meant, what the mystery meant, right? <clears throat> so now we see that honey represents the word. Honey represents wisdom. No wonder these witches try to take this stuff. Because they know they don't want us to get catch the revelation of what this means, Right? And don't don't get it twisted. Now we're gonna venture off and talk about bees and talk about what they do and how it reflects on us. Oh yes, we are. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. No, not Amun Ra. Okay, I'm talking about the Amen. Okay, don't believe that lie. So here we go. You know, going through now we got some old testament ones, but I just want you to see. Uh, before we get into the New Testament, we're going to go through the Old Testament one. Write Psalms of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 11. Very interesting. Okay, we're not going to read it. But um, we're going to go now to Ezekiel, chapter 3. Write Ezekiel 3, verse 1. <clears throat> Ezekiel 3, verse 1. Hallelujah. I know you like brother words, man. Only you will come up with a sermon called the eternal honey. Yeah, that's right. Praise God. He gets all the glory. You know, God is very creative. He's very artistic and so genius. Like, I love the brilliance of the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm a huge fan. Of the chef in the kitchen. He is amazing. So it says, verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and, and he caused me to eat that roll. He said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then I did eat it, and it was in my mouth as sweet excuse me, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Wait a minute, so a message given to the Son of Man, and you can also find that in Revelations, 
where he eats it and it's sweet in the mouth. Again, how is honey referring to messages from the Most High? What is this about? Write down Ezekiel 27, 17. Ezekiel 20, verse 6. And we're going to read Ezekiel 16, 13, I believe it is. Ezekiel 16, 13. Come on, hurry up. We got to move here. We got to move here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1613. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk, embroidery work, thou didst eat fine flour and what? Honey and oil. And thou was exceeding beautiful, and you did prosper into a kingdom. So honey represents royalty and beauty. Beauty is not always just the outside, y'all. Come on, don't be shallow. Beauty can be... Beauty needs to be recognized on the inside first. So, here we go. We're just kind of skipping through it. Write down 2 Kings 18.32. Write down uh, 2 Chronicles 31.5. Write down Leviticus chapter 2 verse 11 and chapter 20 verse 24. Write down Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 2 and 3. As well as chapter 32 verse 13. This is interesting. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 14. Verse. Hold on. 1 Samuel chapter 14, start at verse 26. And when the people were coming to the woods, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. Now, hold on a minute. What was this about? King Saul, who represents the religious church, the Pharisees, those that are haters of the cross but yet act like they're followers of Christ that's why a lot of a lot of ministries like I, we've had so we've had people email us and say man of God I tried to tell the local pastor about you guys and uh, he immediately tried to slander you guys and I knew it was a devil in him you got to realize that he's like a Saul and I'm like a David for real and that's just obviously because Christ in me. I'm not speaking highly of myself because I would be nothing without Christ on the inside of me. But because Christ is truly in me and Lioness and many others that are in this ministry. And we got a lot of amazing men and women of God who are growing in this ministry. And we're just so joyful seeing y'all become stronger in the Lord and in this ministry. And we want you to know that we are so excited to see where God is going to take you in him and this ministry. But point is, is they would email us and be like, I knew it right away. I could see the devil in his eyes. And it's because that man is like a Saul. You see, so Saul was rebellious. He was going after God's Oh, man, you know, if you know how much the Lord truly loves David, you know what I'm saying? Like, so this man was not even led. He he tries to pronounce a curse. No one eat nothing on the land, right? So the people was afraid. But check out what Jonathan does. <laughs> check it out. But when Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath, Wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand. Notice it was a about to do the walk away. I'm 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 about two seconds from Come on now. Especially for y'all partners that know the mystery of the rod of God from the altar sermon. He takes his rod now. <laughs> And he puts forth the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in a honeycomb and put his hand to his mouth and his eyes were what? Enlightened. 
Now, later on in the chapter, of course, Saul tries to act up and try to, like, get Jonathan killed. But the people was like, nah, we ain't with that. You try to pronounce an oath and a curse that whoever eat would be dead and nothing happened to the brother. But his eyes was enlightened. That tells you something about honey. Now, of course, we're speaking in a spiritual aspect. Now, hell, honey is great. Have it in the house. Like I said, with tea and stuff like that, it's good honey now. Get the good quality. You got to treat the temple of God better than you are. Amen. And that goes for me, too. Okay, exercise, you know what I mean? Get that heart pumping, like, let's do this together, okay? But of course, you know, the spiritual exercise is most important, but it doesn't mean you neglect your body. Now, so here we got the, you know, his eyes were enlightened. I mean, what does that mean? You want to find out. You want to find out. Hallelujah. So here we got. His eyes are enlightened, okay? But, you know, like I said, it's also bad, honey. Because if you go to Proverbs 5, and again, this is a reflection of, you know, the witches that you try to use honey in their spells and stuff like this. But in verse, uh, verse, uh, Three, for the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, and her steps take hold on a hell. See, that's, again, that's the witches also operate with honey. You know, fire can be used to keep someone alive or to destroy a house. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that have a dual dual uh, destiny where, you know, it can be used for one or two things, right? So, again, we're going to reject the satanic honey in prayer as well. So now going through all of this, I started really meditating. And I'm like, okay, so if honey clearly is a representation of the word and of wisdom... Right? I, then all of a sudden, the Lord dropped in my spirit the bees of the gospel. I mean, have you ever did a quick study? I mean, watch a five-minute video on bees. You know what I mean? Like, what they do. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Why the earth would, we mankind would die off without bees. Think about that. So then I started to meditate. And once again, there's some interesting. God a lot of times loves telling us to study animals. Like, you know, he said, study the ant, right? He said these certain things that are just amazing, right? The way a bird is in the sky and the way this and that. And so God loves his creatures, his animals, you know, and we ought to treat animals with respect as well. But I said, wait a minute, Lord. The honey got to have a deep revelation about Christ and about the gospel. And I'm like, Lord, give it to me. I need this revelation. I want to I wanna get excited and get a new, fresh respect for Christ once again. And, and he was so faithful to give it. So God said, we are the bees of the gospel. Now, bees do a lot of different things. First off, they if it wasn't for bees, fruit would not develop and grow. Can't you see as believers of Christ, we are used by the Holy Ghost. He operates through us and we develop fruit in other people when we encourage them and we pray for them. Some of us teach, some of us are preaching in the streets and we're, we're, we're the bees of the gospel. Forget all the witches trying to claim bees. No, we are the bees of the gospel of Jesus Christ because we produce that, that honey. And did you know that bees transfer honey mouth to mouth? We, we transfer the word of God and the wisdom of God mouth to mouth. We speak and we communicate and we go from what, like, I'm going to give you this message and you're going to receive this message through Christ with joy and you're going to tell someone else about it and they're going to tell someone else about it. And that's how we spread the honey around. Because honey is eternal. 
bees are diligent and they work hard together. They have a stinger. Huh? When it's time to go to war, we got the sword of the spirit now. But if it wasn't for the bees, there would be no fruit. It's what keeps the plants alive when they go in and do their due diligence. And again, I ain't said the science kid. We're going to just keep it at a minimum so this sermon ain't five hours long. But that's amazing. We are supposed to be diligent in the gospel. We are supposed to be hardworking. Did you know? Oh, did you know that bees travel and depend on the sun and the sky for direction and the wind? We depend on the son of righteousness, Christ, to travel. And we depend on the Holy Ghost to lead us. We depend on the Holy Ghost. All right, okay, let's get a little deeper with it. So let's bring all this together. Honey is an antibacterial. I want you to think of it like this. What if honey truly represents in the spirit the word of God, but deeper than that, the word Christ, the real word of God, because remember, you got the word of God, the scriptures, but then you got the word of God who became flesh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yahshua the Messiah, Emmanuel, right? What if honey represents salvation? Because it's eternal. It's symbolic. And look at this. Bacteria cannot grow in honey. Think of the bacteria as demons. And curses. When you're filled with the honey of Christ. Oh this is so good. When you're filled with the honey of Christ. Bacteria can't grow in you. Curses can't spread in you. Demons can't inhabit you and stay in you. But also. What I tell you earlier. Leaven cannot survive in honey. Remember what Luke 12 says. Jesus said do not give do uh, be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Leaven, in essence, represents sin. Oh my Lord Jesus, thank you, Father God, for this message. So when we receive the gospel, when we accept Christ as Lord, and we receive His salvation, His honey, He gives us the power not only to have eternal life. He gives us protection, antibacterial protection, and he gives us the strength to overcome sin because it's the leaven and leaven cannot, it cannot inhabit honey. My God, this is amazing. Then let's, let's, let's do two things. One, Isaiah 7 says in reference, in talking about Christ, you know what, let's just go to it. Go to it real quick. Isaiah 7. I'm so excited. I done drove by everything and ended up in Matthew. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. I done drove too fast and missed the exit. Isaiah 7. Look at what it says in verse, I want to say 13 or 15. Okay, 15. In Jesus' name, butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know how to refuse the evil and choose the good. Wait a minute, this is talking about Christ now. Because you got to remember the mystery of Christ. You know what, I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. Y'all should be caught up with the videos. You should know what I was about to say. But honey is a humbler. Wow. Jesus Christ was feeding off of what type of honey? What are we talking about here? You think he had a big bowl of honey every day? There was definitely a physical attribute to this, but I'm telling you there's a spiritual mystery here that you're about to receive. Thanks, thanks be to the Lord. What about in Matthew? Go to chapter 3. It says in Jesus' name, verse 4, 
and, re and talking about John the Baptist, the greatest prophet. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and his food was locust and wild honey. What? So I paused and the Lord started to that upload into me what that meant. He was such a mighty prophet. Remember, he got his head chopped off because he brought righteous judgment. You see all of these these coward preachers that'll tell you you're not supposed to judge they don't know what they're talking about the bible says he that is spiritual judgeth all things the word of god says judge you righteous judgment christ said you will know a tree by its fruit how do you know a tree by its fruit unless you judge the tree the letter of john says test the spirits to see whether they are of god so the only time you can't judge, brothers and sisters, is if you're in the same sin. If you're lukewarm, don't judge the next person for being lukewarm, God forbid. If you drink or smoke, don't judge someone else that drinks because you look stupid. That's what that, that's what all Paul was saying. That's all he was saying. That's all the Lord was saying. Paul broke it down. See, Paul was one of the greatest teachers ever to walk the planet. He was able to teach the accuracy of Christ in a deeper way to help us understand God better. So let's get back to what I was saying. John the Baptist was a mighty judge. He came to bring judgment and warning. Oh, you generation of vipers, he said. He told Herod, you can't be having sex and fornicating with your brother's wife. Are you crazy? And they got his head cut off. But this is the mystery that God revealed. He ate locusts and wild honey because locusts represent the judgment. He was feeding and getting filled with judgment to give. And the wild honey was the salvation in the word of the gospel. My God, how good is that? Let that soak in. This is such a fun word, a great message. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Wow. So again, you see how John the Baptist as well lived off of honey, but why? Are y'all ready for it? Well, write down Revelation 10, 7 as well. 10, 7 through like 11. It mentions honey as well. About it being sweet in the, hun sweet in the uh, mouth as honey. Now, this is going to be the grand finale. Are y'all ready for it? Go to Judges with me, chapter 14. Judges 14, hallelujah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Judges 14, let's get it. Such a small word, a small message, but so big in the spirit. This is probably one of my favorite messages. I know you like, brother, you say that every week. <laughs> what do I say? I love the chef in the kitchen. He is amazing. Can I get a name? Man. Now, we're going to start at verse 1, because this is the grand finale, so let's just go ahead and eat it up. How many of y'all heard of the riddle of Samson? Well, let's get it. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest and take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, He said, Get her from me. She pleases me well. <laughs> Samson was a, he was a player. You know what I mean? He, you need to repent, Samson, okay, with your, your locks and your muscles. And, and, you know, sisters were just falling weak for the brother. Because I'm sure he was a handsome brother. He was strong. You know what I mean? He was just oozing with testosterone and masculinity. And, you know what I mean? So the minute he ran up on a sister, she kind of just was like, mm, I'm doing what he says. You know what I'm saying? But look at this, though. He, Samson was stubborn. He didn't listen. He was still a mighty weapon for God. And I love Samson. You know what I mean? I believe he made it in. Hallelujah. 
But I didn't really like his. Let me let me say it like this. There were some things I liked about Samson, and there were some things I didn't like about Samson. But overall, he made it in the good book. Can I get a name, man? Now look. <sighs> okay, his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord. That he sought an occasion against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. I, verse 7, I'm just going to leave that one alone. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, this, you know... It, I'm just going to leave that alone. But, and after a time, he returned to take her. Now, now pause right there. So, wait a minute. The Bible says that God can harden a heart and soften a heart. The Holy Spirit can harden someone's heart or soften someone's heart. It's really up to God. Right? So, this lion comes out and Samson kills the lion. But notice that the women Samson is getting involved with are snares for him, right? Because even this woman was not loyal to him, obviously, as well as others like Delilah, right? Which uh, there's another mystery about Samson and Delilah, but we're not going to get into that today. But look at what it says. And after a time, he returned to take her. He turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the dead body of the lion. What? And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating. And, it, and, and came to his father and mother. And he gave them, and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the dead, the carcass of the lion. My God. Are you ready for this? When the Lord gave this to me, it gave me a greater love and appreciation for Christ. Some of our partners, y'all are already downloading. Some of y'all are already catching it. What did Revelation 5 speak about Christ? It said, weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah. In Genesis, it refers to Judah as a lion. You could read Amos chapter 3 verse 8 as well as Proverbs 28 1. The righteous are as bold as a lion. But ultimately, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Right? So let's bring all this together. Here's the mystery. The revelation of Jesus Christ in this message that I'm so excited to give you. If honey represents salvation... And the lion represents Jesus. Is it safe to say that Samson represents the people of Israel that were going against God? And Jesus shows up as the lion, right? He's the lamb of God, but he's, he's also the lion of Judah, right? And he gets in the way of the people or Samson but they kill Christ the Lord hardens the heart of the people for a reason because prophecy had to come to pass and Samson killed the lion but yet by killing the lion the, the honey 
killing Christ was the only way to get the honey or salvation from him. Samson killed the lion and when he came back he was able to get honey which represents salvation and eat it and there was a swarm of bees. We, the, the bees of the gospel emanate out of Christ and if it wasn't for the lion of Judah, the lamb of God dying for us, we would never receive honey or salvation. Oh my God. Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. I must be the lion that you Samson's must kill. I have to sacrifice. I have to be a sacrifice because only in my death will I be able to give you my honey. Wow. I'm, I'm done, y'all. It's time to appreciate Christ. Can you imagine this? Now let's put it all together. John is surviving off of honey. They go into a land of milk and honey in the days of Moses and Joshua and all of these scriptures about honey. It was all the Father in heaven telling us about his honey, which is the salvation of his son, Jesus Christ. I must send my lion, my lamb, my precious only begotten son and you will kill him like Samson killed that lion but when you come back I'm just gonna say three days later when that tomb rolls open he is going to have honey to give to whoever willeth whoever wants the eternal self my god honey is an eternal substance it lasts, and the Bible says that we are to be preserved blameless in Christ. You see, we got to be preserved correctly, and that honey or that spiritual salvation will make us last for eternity. And the honey of Christ that we consume from the dead lion who rose up from the dead, hallelujah, our greater lion is here. No leaven and no bacteria can enter and dwell and remain in honey. We are the bees of the gospel coming in in peace when it's hostile. We we are the bees of the gospel. Be careful because I got me a stinger. I'm coming through. Now I'm <laughs> we the bees of the gospel. We, we transport the honey to one another. We make sure the fruit's growing and developing in the gospel. Jesus Christ sacrificed his own life. He allowed it, the, the Hebrews, the Israelites to kill him along with the Romans. He had to become the dead lion to get that honey to feed us. Eternal salvation. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this message. And I want to pray, Lord, that all those that heard it appreciate it. Lord, you're such a good God to give such amazing revelations about your Son, the Almighty in the flesh. Holy Spirit, we, Holy Spirit, we lift you up. You are so good to us. Thank you for this revelation. Thank you, Lord, that you had to die to give us salvation. You had to become the lion that would die and feed the very same people that kill you honey to sustain them. Oh my God. Brothers and sisters, say, Lord Jesus Christ, Forgive me, Lord, of all my sins. Lord, don't allow my heart to be hardened against Christ. Soften my heart for your Son, Father, my Lord and God in the flesh, Jesus Christ. Jesus, I am so sorry how we treated you. 
You were getting in the way of your people like, like the lion did Samson. When they were on their way to strange gods. Philistines. And just like Samson, they killed you as you stood in their path. But little did they know it had to come to pass. And we thank the Spirit of the Lord for allowing that to happen. For blinding the eyes of the enemy from seeing who Christ really was. Because he had to go to the cross. Peter tried to hinder it. Not knowing. Jesus turned around and said. Satan. I rebuke you. Say Lord Jesus. I eat of your honey right now. The honey that you had to die to give me like that lion. Say, I eat that honey right now. I eat your body and drink your blood. Jesus, thank you for honey, which represents your salvation. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, I believe by faith that through consuming your honey in the spirit, all the bacteria and the leaven, I command you to leave my spirit and soul. Leave my heart, mind, and body. Get out of me. Preserve me blameless, Lord, and make me a mighty bee in the gospel of Jesus Christ that will transport your honey to other bees, that will help the fruit grow and develop in the Holy Ghost, as well as bearing my own fruit, that will sting my enemy with power, prayer, and with the sword of the Spirit. I will be diligent like bees and stick together like bees, leaning on each other, my God. And the glorious thing, Lord, is this is not a matriarchal, but a patriarchal beehive. Yes! Say, Lord Jesus Christ, Thank you for sacrificing your own life for me. Allow this word to sink deep into my inner man that I may meditate on it and have a greater appreciation for you and who you are and what you have done for me. And as, the, as a bee in the gospel, help me to rely on the son of righteousness to travel and may I be led of the wind of the Holy Spirit to travel. May I allow you to direct my steps just like the bees are directed by the sun and the wind. And finally, O oh God in heaven, by the authority of Jesus Christ, I break all witchcraft and spells through the power of honey. I break it in Jesus Christ's name. I break every spell of a sting of a bee. I break every curse, every witchcraft, all sorcery. I smash it and I burn it up with the fire of the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, say I renounce all sorcery and all the occult. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. I bless you. In Jesus Christ's name. Selah. I'm, I'm done now. I, I can't even. <laughs> Amen. We got some other messages coming. We got some documentaries that I'm still, I got to wrap them up, y'all. We got some powerful videos coming by the grace of God. One is uh, called Exposing Sex Magic. You don't want to miss that. That's a documentary. We got another one coming out called The God of the Dead. You don't want to miss that. And then for our partners only. Uh, we have a message that we will email you privately soon. Don't email me and ask for it because I'll give it to you when it's done, okay? So we love you guys. Thank you uh, to all our partners for your support. And especially this new year, we got a lot we're trying to do. And may the Lord reward you for everything you do for his servants and for this ministry. We love you so much. Stay righteous. Stay holy. Live for Christ. And uh, if you're new to this uh, ministry... Uh, become a partner. Go to uh, revelationsofjesuschrist.com or theghettogospel.com 
and make a commitment and join the fight. Um, but we love all y'all, okay? If you're an enemy of Christ, know that we love you and we pray you repent and you get saved. If you're a Saul trying to forbid us from eating the honey, we gonna be like a Jonathan that says, I don't care what you say, I'm eating this honey and my eyes will be enlightened. Of course, we're a greater Jonathan because we, we live and not die in Christ. So with that being said, Father, thank you for the word. It was an honor to serve you this meal. Keep praying for us, okay? We need your prayers. We've had a lot of spiritual warfare going on and your prayers are very important. After all, we pray for you. You don't want to look like an ungrateful swine to God, okay? Change your attitude. Change your character. Start to be more Christ-like. That goes for all of us. Amen. All right, y'all. We'll see you sooner than later, Lord willing. Bless.